Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. So today I figured I would do a fun little tag. It is the bookshelf time capsule tag that Jesse the Reader um, came up with and I'll tag that video below so you can check it out. But I thought it was just a really fun little tag to do and it's Christmas Eve today so I figured I'd have some fun. So the first question is give us an overview of your shelves and tell us where they are from. So this is my main shelf. I have a couple other stacks of books kind of around my room. Um, but this is my main shelf. And for a while I had a very small short shelf that I just kind of piled a bunch of books onto. But um, these shelves actually just came from downstairs. I live with my family. So I ended up just kind of swapping shelves with them. They weren't using it for books. They were using it for other kind of random stuff. Um, so I got the bigger, taller shelves and they got the shorter shelves. And that way I've just been able to expand a bit and kind of spread out my books a little bit so that they're not quite so jammed together. But I have no idea where they're originally from because we've had them forever, so I have no idea. <laughs> the second question is, which shelf on your bookshelf is your favorite? So I honestly say probably this shelf right here. This is all of my general like adult fiction. Um, and I think it's my favorite just because all of the stuff on it is like my favorite books are all on this shelf. I love um, just general fiction. There's a lot of different kinds of fiction here. Um, and I just think it's really nice, all of the different colors and different spines and how kind of mismatched it is. And um, I also really like the, the giant stack of books I have here. So I think that's my favorite. Third question. Do you keep every book you read or you do ditch the ones that you don't end up loving? So I kind of have a problem with this. I tend to keep like every book. I ever own um, which is a, a bit of a problem I'm a bit of a book hoarder because these are not all the books I have I have several bins of books in the basement and in my dormer um, just ones from my childhood and ones that I didn't like so much so didn't want to keep on my shelves so eventually I'm going to have to go through all of those when I end up moving and figure out how many things I want to get rid of because I know it's gonna be quite a few books that I'm gonna want to you know get rid of um, but I just, I tend to want to keep them all because I'm like, I bought them, you know, I had high expectations for them and it just fell short, but I still want to keep them. So I have to work on that. Let me know if you know of, um, any good places to get rid of books. I work at a library, but we don't usually take donations, so I can't do that. And I don't really have any, um, used bookstores locally to send books to or anything. So let me know in the comments if there's any you know, good places to get rid of books or sell books that you don't want anymore. All right, question four. What do you do when your bookshelves fill up? So as I was saying about my bins, I, I tend to just take whichever books on my shelves I don't immediately want to read or already read and didn't love or things like that. And I just put them in whichever bins downstairs um, that I want to. Or I will end up kind of rearranging and making, there's a couple of stacks of books over on my nightstand and on these little shelves I have over there. Um, so I end up kind of just shifting things around and trying to find the little nooks of my room where I can add books to. So that's what usually ends up happening. But um, yeah, <laughs> lots and lots of books and lots of reorganizing. Uh, now question five, kind of along that same trend, is do you have an organizational method? Uh, oh boy, yes, I have many organizational methods. So over um, by my bed, I have two stacks. They are short stories and my Shirley Jackson collection. So that is kind of separate from my main shelf. But the organizational system here is on the top. You can't really see the top shelf, but there is just um, a stack of poetry, some memoirs, and some kind of random uh, nonfiction things that didn't fit anywhere else. Um, and then here, this is all of my um, kind of adult fiction, as I was saying before. So this stack is not in any particular order. It's honestly in like size order, but also order that I would want to access them. Because um, the things on the bottom I've either already read or I'm not going to read for a long time, probably. And the stuff at the top is the stuff I want to read the soonest or have read, the, the, you know, the re more recently. Um, so that's kind of the organizational system of that. But this part is all alphabetical. So we have Friedrich Bachmann all the way to Hanya Yanagihara. So this part's alphabetical. Um, this shelf down here 
is uh, a bunch of nonfiction. There's no particular um, order to them. It's just kind of size order and the order in which I want to access them. And over here, I'll move over here so you can see, over here is all of my essay collections. And this goes in height order. And my bottom shelf, which I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see, my bottom shelf over here is all of my children's and YA. So that doesn't really have a particular um, method other than it's just children's and YA. So that's really how I organize my shelves for the most part. Number six, how often do you reorganize your shelves and how do you approach it? So um, because I have been getting a lot of books in lately, um, just during the pandemic and all of that, um, I've just ordered a lot of books and gone to bookshops a couple of times. Um, so I've had to reorganize a lot just to make room for the stuff coming in. Um, and also I got new shelves, so I did a lot of reorganizing. But honestly, throughout the pandemic, I organized my bookshelves so many different times. I really wanted to find a system that I loved where I had kind of vignette sections like my Shirley Jackson and my uh, short story collections. And now I have, you know, a vignette for my essay collections. So I just wanted to find a method where I could have those little broken up sections and it's just not, you know, an entire shelf of books. Um, and I also wanted to figure out how I could make it look nice with the stacks and all of that because that really helps me with space. So honestly, I reorganize my bookshelves a ton, a ton. <laughs> I guess it's really my librarian coming out because I do that all the time at work too. All right, number seven, which shelf bothers you no matter what you do? So honestly, it would be the top shelf up there because it is kind of just so random. Um, that's why I have some pictures kind of covering it. I have um, a couple of framed photographs covering all of the shelves because there's not... I don't know. I just, I don't like the way it looks. It's very random, um, but there's really no way for me to fix it because everything else on my shelves needs to be where, the, where it is. So the top one is kind of just whatever. <laughs> All right, number eight, which book color dominates your shelves? So surprisingly, I would say it's uh, red and pink, those kind of colors. As you can see, there's a lot of red, pink, and orange, um, which is surprising because those aren't particularly colors that I like or I'm drawn to necessarily but it tends to be books that I enjoy or um you know books I'm interested in have a lot of you know we got a lot of pink red orange pink pink red lots of those colors up there so that tends to be the colors that dominate my um collection which is kind of odd because honestly I'm more drawn to yellows and greens and the cream colors um but yeah it's, it's just interesting how that turns out all right, number nine, what is the most damaged book on your shelves? So my most damaged book would be this copy of The Fault in Our Stars. You can see it's pretty wavy. Um, it's got an X because it was a uh, donation from the library and it's also really water damaged. As you can see, it's like pretty wrinkly and water damaged. Um, but this copy is the one that I've been going back through and annotating. So you can see there's like a bunch of annotations and stuff in all of the margins. Um, this is my favorite book and I have multiple copies of it. I have these other copies of it and also the um, audiobook I also own. So this copy was really just a donation that I took home that my boss was like, here, take this because it's water damaged. We can't put it on the shelves. Um, but I ended up just using it to do my annotations. All right, number 10, do you have any books that have major printing errors? So I really looked through um, my books and I don't think so. I don't really have any um, print errors that I can tell, which lucky me. <laughs> All right, uh, number 11, what's the ugliest spine on your shelves? So I pulled off this one. This is a uh, woman in intimate geography by Natalie Ang Ang Angier Anger. I don't know how to pronounce that, but um, I haven't read this yet, but it looked really interesting. It's just kind of um, a feminist text, but the spine is just kind of boring. I don't have a ton of ugly spines, honestly. Um, for the most part, I've kind of curated these to be the pretty ones that I like. Um, but yeah, this one is just not particularly interesting to me. It's just plain kind of white. Um, yeah. All right, uh, let's see, number 12. What do your dream bookshelves look like? So honestly, my dream shelves would be, I would love to have a library room, honestly. Like <laughs> that's my dream is just have a library room with um, kind of shelved all along all of the walls, built built in bookshelves. 
um, with the ladder that you can climb up and you can move, you know, across to get to the floor to ceiling shelves. So that'd be my ideal shelf situation. Obviously, this is nowhere near that, but, um, you know, one, a girl can dream. <laughs> a girl can dream. Okay, number 13. What's the tallest book on your shelves? So I really looked through and for a while I thought it was going to be this um, book bibliophile but it ended up being this copy of Transcendent Kingdom by Yajiasi, which is the book of the month um, copy. This is the first book of the month book that I've gotten. It was the December pick. Um, but yeah, I looked through all my shelves and this one is the tallest. And it's kind of odd because it seems like it's a standard, you know, um, hardcover, but it's just really, really tall in comparison to all of my other books for some reason. All right. Number 14, what's the smallest book on your shelves? So I have a, a decent amount of really skinny books and small books, but my smallest one is this copy of um, a collection of William Carlos Williams poems. It's called The Red Wheelbarrow and Other Poems, and it's just like the size of my hand pretty much. It's really, really skinny and small, and it's like 50 pages. Yeah, 55 pages. So yeah, this is the tiniest book that I have. All right, the next question is, which book is your most prized possession? So I have a lot of books that I'm really, really um, close with. I think this book also because I am annotating it and it is my favorite book. Um, but I would also say this copy of Clap When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo is probably my most prized book um, because it is a signed first edition. And I absolutely adore Elizabeth Acevedo's writing. I think she's brilliant. Um, and she, yeah, here's the signature. But I love the fact that I was able to pre-order a signed first edition, and that means a lot to me. So definitely this one would probably be the most prized book that I have. And the final question is, what's a book that makes you slip into a memory? So honestly, um, probably the one that slips into a memory the most for me is Where the Sidewalk Ends by Shel Silverstein. This is a collection of children's poetry um, that has, you know, some kind of like funny, odd drawings throughout but um, I read this a ton when I was a kid. I used to live on a dead end road um, with a lot of, you know, trees and nature and a lake. So I would take this book up into one of my favorite trees. I'd perch myself in the tree and I would read this poetry. So every time I read poems from here or see this book, I always think about my old house with the wonderful tree that I used to sit in and just enjoying poetry. So. That is the video. Uh, it's a little bit short, so I hope you enjoyed it anyway. But uh, yeah, happy holidays, and I will see you next time.